Okay, so welcome again. This is uh, Jules Grancy again from uh, the European Space Agency, ESA. And uh, it's a pleasure to see you here and uh, to be able to introduce you, a true pleasure, I must say, to introduce you to you uh, a unique lineup of international astronauts from the five partner agencies of the uh, International Space Station program. But before we start with your op opening remarks and uh, Q&A, I would like to leave the floor and the mic to our host today, Director of Ecological and Earth Sciences at UNESCO, Han Chunli. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I welcome you all, uh, especially the, the crew uh, of the space mission uh, to UNESCO. Uh, thank you for you all to come to the press conference. Uh, on behalf of UNESCO, I would like to uh, welcome you to this uh, one-year crew press conference, which aim to inform you about the first ever one-year-long mission of the two crew members uh, to the International Space Station. Uh, this is a particular significant mission uh, because it will advance our knowledge, uh, how the human body reacted to long periods in space, and will uh, present an excellent opportunity to strengthen international scientific cooperation. It is uh, uh, very appropriate uh, at this press conference that to take place in UNESCO uh, premise, uh, because not only the, the science, the big word, the, the character S in UNESCO stand for uh, science, but also because the UNESCO role in science is to promote the international cooperation uh, in many areas of scientific mandate. Uh, let me see that uh, in the case of UNESCO, this international cooperation in the science takes place mainly on the ground in the field uh, ranging from the science technology innovation policy, uh, capacity building for research, uh, use of science uh, to manage the planet uh, freshwater resources, the oceans and the terrestrial ecosystems, all in the interest of uh, the peace and the sustainable development. UNESCO has worked uh, with many space agencies to assist, uh, in particular in developing countries, uh, to access the benefit of space technology, especially remote sensing products, to help manage the environment in the context of UNESCO World Heritage Site and the World Network of Biosphere Reserves. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, 2015 is a very significant year to all of us. Uh, this year, the, uh, this long one-year uh, mission, space mission, uh, starts at, in, at the time when international community will make uh, important decisions on the new program for sustainable development of this planet and its people uh, through the establishment of the Sustainable Development Goals, so-called SDGs, and what we term as the post-2015 development agenda. You know, this Big issues and challenges on the biodiversity loss, climate change, the management of our very limited water, freshwater resources, the ocean health, uh, environmental stability, and the reduction of natural disasters are to be addressed in the new uh, global agenda. Uh, 2015 will also be significant as a major uh, conference uh, on climate change, uh, on climate, the COP21, are going to be held in Paris. Uh, next year. Uh, as you know that, uh, uh, as you, in your mission to look down the Earth from the International Space uh, Station, uh, be assured that uh, space technology and the products of space exploration play and it will continue to play a pivotal role uh, to address the challenges our planet faces today and as a means of implementing in achieving sustainable development goals for the good uh, future of all of us. Uh, UNESCO congratulates you all for this uh, joint mission uh, of Russian and American astronauts and uh, consider it's a strong sign of renewed international commitment for the peaceful use of space and international cooperation in science. UNESCO wish you a very successful mission. Thank you very much. Han uh, Shuli, thank you very much. So we we said one year, the name says it's already one year mission. That's uh, double the amount of the uh, usual duration on what the space station, Scott, if I may start with you. What, are you, what do you expect from, from this mission, one year on board the space station? 
Well, thank you, Jules. And uh, before I answer that question, I wanted to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, ESA and UNESCO for, uh, for hosting this event and setting it up, and also thank my uh, astronaut and cosmonaut colleagues for, uh, for joining us here today, especially uh, Soichi and, and Jeremy that don't get the, uh, the privilege of flying in space as part of this, uh, this one-year mission. So got to hand it to them for, for showing up for this today. Appreciate their efforts. Um, what makes this exciting about, uh, for me, this one-year flight is about the science and everything we're going to learn from uh, expanding the envelope on the space station uh, greater than, than what we've currently done. And if we're ever going to go to Mars someday, the International Space Station is really a uh, great platform to learn uh, much more about having people live and work in space for longer durations. It's, uh, it's close to the Earth, um, and it's a great uh, orbiting facility. So this one-year flight is uh, one of many stepping stones towards uh, leaving low Earth orbit again. It's a, a focused effort to reach across international and technological boundaries to enhance our integrated uh, science on board the space station. Now, we do science every day on the International Space Station, over probably 150 different type of investigations that are going on right now and have been going on uh, since the space station started flying in, uh, in uh, 2000, the year 2000, when we had uh, our first crews on board. However, for this flight, NASA has selected uh, 19 collaborative investigations to evaluate the effects of longer duration spaceflight on humans. Uh, Roscosmos and the Russian Space Agency uh, selected 14 investigations, and some of those investigations are joint investigations that Misha and I will be participating in um, together. As far as the U.S. science is concerned, and I think Misha is prepared to talk about the, the Russian science investigations, our 19 investigations are broken down into, into uh, seven different categories, um, from functional to behavioral health, uh, visual impairment, uh, metabolic, physical performance, microbial, and uh, human factors investigations. So to kind of sum up um, what or the answer to Jules' question for me is what makes this so much uh, different than the last time, obviously the duration, but also uh, my excitement is for the, uh, the science and what we're going to learn on this uh, nearly one-year flight. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I'm, I'm turning to Misha right now. You two will be uh, spending uh, one year on board the space station. You'll be leaving and working as part of the uh, one-year uh, crew. What do you expect from this flight, and what does it mean for you? Well, all that Scott said is probably very accurate and describes our mission. I would like to add that it is a platform, as he said, a platform for further exploration to Mars, to the Moon, for further space exploration. It's an opportunity to push deeper into space, and it can serve as a stepping stone for that. The furthest, the last long-term space mission was on the Mir station, and it brought major data for investigations and research about how hum humans will feel during long-term flights into space. I hope that our mission will be an opportunity, as Scott said, for others who will follow in our footsteps and take space exploration further. Now, of course, this is a scientific station. We will carry out many experiments, around 58 to be precisely, mainly physical and chemical experiments, looking at processes and how materials react in space. We will also look at experiments involving human physiology and biology. Science is one of the reasons for which we are going to be flying to the space station, and it is one of the reasons why we're going to go there for a longer time. Thank you. 
Andreas, Andreas Mogensen, like I said, you are training currently for a space flight in September 2015. Can you tell us a bit more about how your mission will be linked to the uh, one-year mission on the space station? So 2015 is going to be a, a fantastic year on board the space station. Obviously, this is the, the first time we'll have uh, two astronauts up there for an entire year. Uh, for personal reasons, it's also going to be a, a great year. This is, will be my uh, first space flight, and I'm honored to be able to uh, support the, the one-year mission uh, in just a, well, a small way. Um, halfway through the mission of uh, Scott and, uh, and Misha, I'll be uh, joining them for a short period uh, to, to, to fly up a new Soyuz, and then I'll be returning in their uh, Soyuz um, the thing is, a Soyuz is rated for six months in space, so halfway through their mission, um, we'll, we'll do a Soyuz change-out, and that'll give me an opportunity to, uh, to support them and visit the space station. And of course, during the 10-day the mission, uh, we'll have a, a full program of uh, science experiments, um, and that'll hopefully give scientists uh, a chance to study not only uh, short-duration crew members, but also uh, six-month-duration crew members and, and one-year uh, missions. And as Scott mentioned, uh, the, the space station really is an ideal platform uh, to build upon uh, in our further exploration of the, of the solar system. So I'm happy to be able to support it. Um, 2015 is also going to be a, a, a really great year for the European Space Agency. We'll have uh, three astronauts in space uh, next year. Uh, Samantha Cristoforetti, uh, my Italian colleague, is uh, currently up there. She launched uh, th three, four weeks ago. Uh, I was at her launch in Baikonur supporting her, and she'll be there until May. I'll then uh, uh, fly in September, and then my uh, uh, British colleague, uh, Tim Peake, will, will follow me in, in November and December for another six-month mission. So this is a, a really a, a great year, not just for uh, the International Space Station uh, program with the one-year mission, but also for the European Space Agency with, with three astronauts on board the space station. So I'm really looking forward to, to next year. Thank you, Andreas. And Sochi, like, like Andreas said, the uh, one-year mission on board the ISS, that's a very important step for the whole ISS program. What, what does it mean from a Japanese point of view for, for JAXA? Yeah, thank you, Jules. And uh, I would like to thank uh, UNESCO for hosting us today. And I would like to uh, congratulate uh, Scott and Misha for a one-year mission. And uh, Scott and I was in the uh, uh, ASCAN class of 1996. It goes long, long way. And we had a lot of a good time and bad time together. <laughs> and Misha, of course, so we flew together five years ago. Actually, we had a birthday together uh, in 2010. And uh, very happy to know that he has another birthday in space next year. And uh, yeah, like Drew said, you know, this one-year crew Although Scott and Misha are the highlights of the mission, but it is not just for America and Russia, it's for all five international partners, great achievement. Uh, JAXA has a, a biomedical uh, experiment with Scott and Misha, and uh, Andy actually worked with uh, Japanese uh, experimental module Kibo to launch a couple of uh, small satellites uh, using Kibo module. And of course, Canada has a great uh, robotic arms to help support the uh, space station operation. So the one-year crew, one-year mission is the great achievement of all five partners. Of course, it benefits all the countries around the world. This is the, the magnificent achievement of uh, biomedical and science uh, experiments. And it's, a, and it's a, the gap, uh, bridging the gap between the ISS and to the, the space exploration which coming in, in the coming years. And uh, we are very happy to be a part of this uh, big group. And also I'd like to uh, uh, congratulate uh, uh, this crew as the president of Association of Space Explorers. Association of Space Explorers is a nonprofit organization which started in France in 1985, and next year it actually marks the 30th anniversary. And uh, once uh, Andreas comes back to us, so we will uh, congratulate him as the, the newest member. And uh, Jeremy will certainly to follow us. And uh, both Scott and Misha has been a great member, and uh, we'll be 
having uh, the great uh, Congress next year while they are enjoying the, the space mission. Thank you very much. Jeremy, uh, like uh, Soichi said, also Canada is very much involved in the uh, ISS program. One year mission, one year on board the space station. What does it mean for the Canadian Space Agency? Well, of course, as a, a proud partner of the International Space Station, Canada and the Canadian Space Agency, we're legitimately proud to be a part of this mission. It's very exciting for us. And while our support for a one-year mission is very similar to a support for any expedition crew as the ones that are going on right now, things like we will continue to leverage the International Space Station, the laboratory that it is for science, science that we feel is benefiting humanity on the ground. So that, of course, is something very exciting. And, and as, you, as you may know, our Canadian robotics are, are busy at work on board the International Space Station at all times. So during Chris, or Scott's and Misha's uh, mission, we'll be supporting things like station maintenance with the arm. Of course, they're, they plan to do some spacewalks. And, uh, and maybe something that's very important to them, Canada Arm will be capturing visiting vehicles that are bringing oh so important supplies and experiments uh, to and from the International Space Station. So this is continued work for Canada, we think is of great benefit to, uh, to the world. But personally, I'm, I'm actually very interested in this one-year mission because I think it signifies something very significant. I'm, I'm often, I find myself in front of young Canadians telling them about our, our space program and the exciting things that are coming in space. And, and I see this mission as signifying future exploration, leveraging the International Space Station to exciting new missions that challenge the, the human spirit of exploration. And uh, when I had the opportunity to, to sit with Scott last night, I was asking him some questions about what it's like to prepare mentally for a one-year mission. You know, I personally hope someday in the future to be part of some missions that take me beyond a low Earth orbit. And some of these missions will require significant periods of time and space. And you know, I'm very interested in how one prepares for that. What are, what are the concerns that a commander has for his crew when they're setting off on, a, on an exciting mission like this? I'm often, I often tell young Canadians that uh, during my lifetime, I fully expect to see humans walk on Mars and return to planet Earth. And I'm, uh, I'm very inspired by this one-year mission. I wish them the best of luck. Thank you very much, Jeremy. We'll, uh, we'll now, if you please, uh, take questions from the floor here. So please introduce uh, yourself and ask your question. Uh, hello, uh, Andre, TV Center, Russian TV channel. I have a question for Scott Kelly. Uh, Mr. Scott, uh, Mr. Keller, I'm sorry, what kind of uh, challenges do you expect during a year in space? And did you have a chance to learn from previous Russian and Soviet experience on Mir Station, at least in theory? So, um, you know, there are the, the, the challenges that you know and the challenges that you don't know are going to present uh, themselves. And hopefully there will not be a lot of the, uh, the latter. Um, but in space, anything, uh, you know, you got to be prepared for anything that happens. Um, I think the biggest uh, expected challenge, obviously, will be the duration of the flight and uh, the amount of work and just pacing uh, myself and Misha pacing himself and the other crew members as well. I mean, six months in space is also a, a really long time and uh, having a appropriate pace is, is important. And I think it's even more important since we're gonna, we're gonna Misha and I will be there twice as long. As far as the uh, learning from the experiences of, of Russian cosmonauts that have flown uh, a year or longer, I have spoken to some of them and uh, I have shared uh, some of, or they have shared with me some of their experiences and uh, kind of right along the lines that I was thinking that, you know, the, the pace of work is one of the most critical things. Interrupt. Uh, you no, know, uh, psychological that probably colleagues that you talked to shared any, you know, specific thing that can happen on a year long flight that was a surprise for you? I, I uh, have not spoke uh, specifics with anyone, and uh, if there's, uh, if I come up with anything like that um, about a year and a half from now, I'll let you know. Thank you. Another question from the floor here. 
Vestia, good afternoon. Can you tell us uh, tell us more about shooting on board and the photos and the filming? Are you taking cameras or how is that going to happen? Well, look, that's part of what we'll be doing on board. Uh, we'll be photographing the Earth, or doing this from inside uh, the station. We'll be trying, obviously, to convey that to young people. I'm sure they'll find that interesting. Uh, this might just not be the most important part of our work. The most important is going to be uh, the uh, science, which uh, sort of uh, is complemented uh, by the photo. So we'll be taking these things uh, step by step and taking them one at a time. I, I don't think I can say much more than that. Thank you. Another question from the floor? Okay, if we have no questions from now from the floor, I'd like to uh, take, we, we've had a couple of questions coming in from our social media at ESA and NASA. So I'd like on behalf of uh, the millions of followers of uh, ESA and NASA channels to um, have Dan Hewitt from NASA Public Affairs and Marco Trovatello from the ESA Communications Department ask uh, two questions. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Jules. So uh, this first one from one of our followers is for both Scott uh, and Misha. What were what were some of the primary motivators for you guys to volunteer for this longer mission? Some of personal motivators. Yeah, when this uh, idea first uh, come up about having a, a year long flight, uh, I was about uh, it was about a year after I had gotten back from my last flight. It was when we uh, first started talking about this. And at first, um, I, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't that interested uh, because six months is a long time in space and a year is, you know, obviously twice as long. So, um, but, you know, after thinking about it for a while, I did want to fly in space again. And, uh, you know, after giving it further thought and uh, kind, of like, kind of mulling it over for a while, uh, I realized that if I was to fly again another six-month flight, it would be very similar to the last time. And I'm the type of person that likes challenges, and I thought the the challenge, uh, just because it's going to be twice as long uh, over time, uh, became appealing to me. Marco? Um, okay, there's a couple more questions on the psychological side of your experience. For example, one by Maria Paula at Cosmo Meadow on Twitter. Um, and she asks how the overall psych psychological feedback during the whole year will work during the mission. On the, on the U.S. side, we have, uh, there are some psych uh, psychological based experiments and uh, one in particular is this uh, journals experiment where you kind of write down your, you, you keep a journal essentially and write down your feelings and you know from a variety of uh, themes. Um, but also on board we have uh, psychological uh, conferences with uh, our psychological support team um, every other week. And uh, I believe you know the, the Russian Space Agency and the other partner astronauts have a have a similar program. Okay, there's uh, one more question by uh, Eddie on Twitter, um, and his question is: uh, With uh, the several experiments designed for the one-year crew, will they take part part in any of the ongoing bio biomedical experiments? Biomedical experiments, it's uh, more important for our mission uh, on board the station for me and Scott. Uh, there is uh, joint experiments, uh, Russian Space Agency and NASA, and we will do it together. Uh, it uh, helps us to understand how uh, um, human uh, can work uh, on surfaces of planet after a long duration flight. It's, uh, it's a goal of our flight. Thank you.
Yeah, and just to, to follow up on, on what Misha was saying, there's, like I, I said earlier, there's a lot of uh, investigations that go on on board the space station at any one time, you know, 100, 150. And we're participants in those investigations as well, both as, as uh, scientific subjects, but also the, the operator of the experiments, whether they're life science experiments or experiments from uh, many of the other uh, disciplines that uh, we have on board, just like any of the other uh, of our fellow crew members. Thank you very much. Uh, Scott, we are, we are not alone here, I must say. Uh, we are live on NASA TV, and we have also our colleagues at uh, Houston Johnson Space Center. Uh, people have uh, gathered there in the Studio B. And uh, if we are ready, I would like to uh, call Robert Perlman for a first question from Johnson Space Center. Hi, this is Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. A uh, question for Scott. Uh, Okay. Um, around this time of the year, people make New Year's resolutions, uh, and yours and Mikkel's uh, New Year is going to be among the more unique amongst humanity. I wonder if you can share what your resolutions or goals, personal goals for this flight are. Uh, we know what NASA and the international partners want to achieve. What do you personally want to achieve from this mission? What do you personally want? So for me personally, this flight is not uh, any different than any of my three previous flights. Um, my goals have always been no one gets hurt, we don't break anything, and we leave as friends. And uh, that was the case I felt on my first flight, um, which was only eight days. Seemed like that was a long time. I flew with uh, Jean-Francois Clairvoy, who's in the back room, a long time ago. We were both much younger then. That was an eight day flight, and then my next flight was 13 days, and then 159, and they're getting longer. Okay, then we'll go to Mariam Kramer from space.com for your question. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, this is Miriam Kramer with space.com. Uh, I am hoping to know, uh, so what, what can you learn during this one year mission that maybe you will be able to learn during a six month mission? And also, how, how do your families feel about you flying to space for one year? Long duration uh, space flight presents a lot of challenges to the human body uh, specifically uh, with regards to muscle loss, bone loss, uh, vision issues that we've uh, recently realized that people are having, um, the effect on your immune system, the effect on, of radiation on our, on our, uh, on our bodies. Um, and if we're ever going to go beyond low Earth orbit for longer periods of time, understanding uh, those effects over longer periods of time are very important. So uh, if a mission to Mars uh, is going to take a three-year round trip, we need to know uh, better how our, our body and our physiology performs over uh, durations longer than what we've previously on the space station investigated, which is six months. And perhaps, you know, perhaps there's a cliff out there um, with regards to some of these uh, um, issues that, that we experience, and perhaps there, there aren't, but we won't know unless we investigate it. Um, <clears throat> and also, uh, you know, there's a psychological aspect of, of staying in space uh, for a longer periods of time, and there's the, uh, you know, we, need, we have things we can learn from that um, and also the space station as a whole, I think, is a, uh, doesn't quite answer your question specifically, but, you know, I think one of the greatest parts of the greatest investigation of the International Space Station is the, the space station itself, how we have this orbiting laboratory, you know, built by this uh, great international partnership that's, that flies around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour, uh, makes oxygen uh, from our uh, urine, uh, water from our urine into oxygen, scrubs the atmosphere, um, has these, uh, this hardware that keeps us alive for very long periods of time and uh, has been doing so since, uh, you know, the beginning of the last decade. So, um, 
there's a lot to learn by flying in space for longer periods of time, I think. Thank you, Scott. We go back to the NASA phone bridge for a question from Moscow Dunn from AP. Please go ahead. Yes, hello. Um, I have a question, please, from Mr. Kornienko. Um, two years ago, sir, you said that when you uh, told your wife about the mission that she cried. And I'm wondering, how is your wife um, adapting to the fact that you will be soon gone for an entire year? And, and your daughter as well. How old is she? And, and what do they think about your endeavor? Thank you for your question. Uh, when my wife knows uh, about my long duration flight, she's crying. <laughs> uh, but now uh, she very support me, my family support me, and uh, it's very helped me to uh, go through the troubles in the flight, in the preparation to flight. Uh, as to my daughter, uh, she is um, uh, 30 two all the year and you can congratulate me I am uh, becoming grandpa uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you no we have many no it, it <laughs> Although it I'm happened not one uh, of them, four God. months ago. Uh, I had preparations at the same time in uh, in Houston with, with Scott. Well, Misha, congratulations uh, for sure, <laughs> indeed. We have a, a last question from the NASA phone bridge. That's from Irene Klotz from uh, Reuters. Please uh, go ahead. Thanks very much. I actually have uh, two questions. The first is I was wondering um, if uh, um, Scott or Mikhail, either of you, have had an opportunity to speak directly to Dr. Polyakov and some of the other, I guess there's three other cosmonauts who have made uh, flights of at least a year in duration. And if so, what they told you about uh, being in space for that long. And then um, also the second question is about a, um, any kind of engineering um, exercises that might be planned uh, to prepare for uh, Mars missions um, that you guys might be doing, specifically things like um, at one time there was a discussion about isolating you and part of the station, space station to simulate the time delays and um, so forth that you'd have in communications from Mars. Thanks very much. Yeah, Irene, I've, I've spoke to um, some of the cosmonauts, not specifically Polyakov, who has the longest duration of uh, days in space, over 400, but I've spoke to some of the other cosmonauts, and, you know, the advice they said was, you know, pace yourself, basically, uh, simply. Uh, as far as the types of engineering investigations you're talking about with regards to going to Mars, there was some discussion at one time about us isolating ourselves and uh, in uh, one of the modules on the space station. Uh, at the time, it was we were talking about the MLM, which has not yet flown, the Russian MLM. So um, from a practical perspective, we really couldn't do that now. It would really affect the uh, other operations on board the International Space Station uh, if we were to isolate ourselves in, let's say, the service module or Node 3. So there really uh, was no further, uh, that discussion really didn't get uh, very far. As regards isolation, um, the crew members for a year-long flight or in an effort to simulate a flight to Mars, then, as Scott said, it would be possible to simulate this. It would have been possible to do it in other circumstances, but I think that we will, in time, overcome all the difficulties, and scientists will understand whatever they want to find out through the experiments that will be conducted. Thank you.
Do we have another question or some more questions in the room here? Yes, yes, please. Bonjour. Hello, I am from Forme of Mathématique. I'm sorry to ask you the question in French, but I hope there will be interpretation. We have no doubt about the support that your family were providing, but what they think and what will their psychological reaction be to your flight? Will there be some monitoring for their psychological status? Yes, thank you very much. Psychological preparation for your family. Is there anything specific for this flight? Uh, any specific um, psychological support? to your family? At uh, NASA, we do have that available. I'm not going to go into specifics about uh, specific individuals, but NASA does provide that a, a, a psychological support uh, structure for, for our families if that's, uh, if that's necessary. Yes. Merci. Uh, yes, well, I will also put a question to you in French. I understand uh, that you will be conducting a number of experiments relating to uh, the human being, the human body, listening, uh, looking at what's the biology, trying to conduct studies and investigations in the lab. Are you also going to look at um, s uh, earth science and uh, uh, environment. Over and beyond uh, human biology, are you going to look at uh, earth sciences and the biology or, or the uh, science of the environment? We've just had uh, COP20 in Lima. COP21 is coming up next year in France. So I'm sure that the French would be most interested in hearing what sort of experiments or investigation you will be conducting over and beyond what you're doing on human beings, but also possibly relating to the Earth it's, uh, as such, the environment and climate change. That's, um, so we understand we, we're gonna have, you're going to have experiments um, about the human body and human physiology. The question is, uh, do you have also in the program some uh, experiments on the Earth like geological, geological experiments. Yeah, because uh, uh, we pass, yes, be uh, the COP l'année prochaine. As I said, uh, France is host country for uh, COP uh, of the uh, United Nations uh, climate change uh, conferences. And so that's why uh, we are interested in know wh where, uh, whether you will conduct the, uh, the study about the Earth, not only human, human uh, bodies. Well, the International Space Station is a, not only an excellent platform for human research, but also, as you uh, bring up, for, for studying uh, the Earth itself. And one of the, well, one of the, from an asteroid point of view, one of the main ways is through taking pictures that we share and that, uh, scientists on the ground analyze. But the space station itself is also an excellent platform uh, to use for scientific observations. Um, and a lot of this research not only takes place inside, but also on the outside of the space station. So we have uh, a lot of different experiments that are uh, mounted on the outside of the space station, looking both uh, down at the Earth, but also at our sun, for example. Um, and there are a lot of very interesting uh, experiments going on right now, but also coming up. Uh, in 2016, the European Space Agency will launch, uh, for example, uh, uh, an experiment called ASIM, the Atmosphere Space Interactions Monitor, which will uh, study some of these um, gigantic lightning strikes that actually shoot upwards into space rather than down to the ground. Uh, these are uh, lightning strikes that can shoot all the way up to about 80 or 90 kilometers. And we're talking about a, a tremendous amount of energy that's released uh, normally, we're not aware of this because obviously we're at the uh, below the thundercloud, so we don't uh, see what's above them. Uh, but the space station is an excellent platform uh, from which to observe some of these uh, huge lightning strikes called uh, uh, elves, uh, blue jets, red sprites, and so forth. And um, as as there's such a, a large amount of energy involved, they do, or we suppose that they must have some kind of influence on on our atmosphere and. And so that's the purpose of, of this experiment that will be launched in 2016. So yes, there are a lot of uh, very interesting uh, Earth observation experiments going on using this, 
the space station as a platform. Another question from the floor, une autre question pour les gens. Any other questions from the floor? Hello, I will also put my question to you in French. I would like to ask Jeremy Hansen. You said that you're very excited about 2015. Do you feel that in the months to come, or maybe years to come, the space programs will benefit from more support from states? We've spoken over the recent times of budget cuts and monetary constraints. Do you think that space agencies will benefit from more support from their respective governments in the near future? Yes, of course, we're seeing more commitment for space agencies, and I think that that will continue. I don't think this is just at industry level, but I think that states will also provide further support to their space agencies and space programs. These pieces we're putting together uh, that are these capabilities, I see that you know, right now we're in low Earth orbit. We're learning a lot about spacecraft systems that need to survive long duration in space, how the human body can survive these long duration missions. And then the next logical steps are, are for us to leave low Earth orbit again and to start to venture out. And we, we, we talk about a number of different mission objectives. You know, right now we speak a lot about, um, you know, recently we had the amazing uh, results of Rosetta and, and landing on an asteroid, but sending humans to an asteroid, whether we bring that asteroid into a lunar orbit to have astronauts explored, or we send astronauts out further into space. And, you know, we know how to do all these things. Um, but as you're alluding to, there's a, there's a timing that makes sense, and there's a natural stepping stone in evolution to when we can afford the benefits that those missions and expeditions are, are going to bring back for us. We'd all love to go do them right away. Um, just like I'd like to fly, I'd like to join Scott and, and Misha on their, on their mission, that'd be amazing. But there is a, there's a certain, certain prudence required to make sure we get there in an economical fashion. And, but these, you see, I mean, some people are disillusioned by what they see. They don't think we're moving fast enough, but not me personally. I think we are. If you look, we're taking continuous steps. And I live, you, you don't see it every day like we do, but we live this, um, we live and breathe space every day. We talk to hundreds of people are working on this program, and they're absolutely amazing minds that are all working together, international, come together as an international community, and we're accomplishing amazing things. It's pretty awesome. Merci, Jeremy. Une autre question du... Any other questions from the floor? Okay, then I would like to go back to our social media folks here, Dan Hewitt from NASA Public Affairs and Marco Trovatello from the ESA Communication Department for a question on behalf of the uh, followers of ESA and NASA. Thank you, Jules. Uh, so this one comes in, and I would actually pose it to all of our panelists if they could just give a, a couple of quick thoughts. You know, since uh, the International Space Station program, so much of what we're doing is getting us ready to go beyond. How possible is it that we will see a manned Mars trip in our lifetime? Okay, but I'll start because I'm at, the, at this end, I guess. Um, I hope uh, it, it'll happen in my lifetime. Um, we, I think, have most of the technology to do it now. It's a matter of having the public and political willpower and want to invest the amount of money it's going to cost. Um, but I think I'll, I think in the next uh, 30 to 40 years, we'll see that hopefully sooner. Maybe some earlier. I'm optimist uh, in that case, but uh, to do it, we have to join our powers. It's not only one country, it's international uh, program. If we will do it, it will be earlier. Thank you. Well, I, I would agree with uh, Scott. Where we are today in terms of technology, we're much closer to a, a Mars mission than we were in the start of the 60s to, to landing men on the moon. So it's definitely a, a question of a political well uh, for us to see a, a, a Mars mission. Yeah, as, well, I cannot predict the future, but the important thing is that we continue our joint uh, 
program together and uh, move this, the program forward. And uh, uh, Andreas mentioned about the Rosetta. We also, JAXA has a high Rosetta too. And just make sure that the, all the people around the world is continuously looking toward the future space exploration and someday somebody will step on Mars. For me, it's, it's, I'm very optimistic about it. I, I honestly believe that uh, it's going to happen in my lifetime as long as I live a, a decent lifetime. And the reason I say that is because we absolutely know how to do it. There are technical challenges, there are risks that need to be weighed, but we, we know how to do it. It's really just a financial decision about when the right time is to do it. And a lot of that comes down to the cost of access to space. And that's what really excites me about spur or commercial um, space, the commercial space industry, because that is driving the cost of access to space down, which changes everything and, and will enable us ultimately to fly more hardware into space. There's a really fascinating technology in the space station right now. Probably while we're talking right now, there's a 3D printer that's making uh, certain objects, so we understand 3D printing in space. But you can, you can only imagine the implications of being able to print and cr or, um, create new objects in space and how that reduces the problem of getting to a place like Mars when you don't have to bring as much mass with you. So all these things are starting to add together to say, hey, we, we know how to do it and this is going to make it cheaper, more affordable for us. And that, uh, to me, says it's going to happen in the not so distant future. Thank you, Marco. You have a question on behalf of the ESA followers? Uh, yes, both uh, the NASA and the ESA followers. Uh, and it is a question by Mr. Robert Nakin. Uh, who is obviously the teacher of an eighth grade multimedia class, which wants to know how do you actually exercise in space? And if I may, I would like also to pass this on for a short statement by everybody of you. We would, of course, also be interested to know how do you physically exercise for space on Earth? Thank you. Yeah, about the uh, exercise. Uh Equipment uh, on the space station, we have lots of uh, different kinds of uh, ex uh, exercise equipment. The, my favorite was uh, the kind of weight lifting machine. Of course, weightlessness, we have to use uh, power of uh, air pressure but, uh, and uh, some kind of a mechanical uh, re resistance. But uh, we place this uh, near the us viewing window. So uh, every time I do exercise, I see that Sahara Desert passing by. The, the, the beautiful uh, coral reefs is right in front of me. So that's the very uh, most rejoicing time. Of course, uh, it's not just for viewing pleasure, but it's, uh, we use a lot of uh, biomedical equipment associated with the exercise. And I believe uh, both Scott and Misha do uh, hundreds of hours uh, for exercising uh, on their one-year mission. Scott, do you have to do more sports daily on board the space station if you stay for a year? There's, a, there's a, actually a study um, that uh, some astronauts have, have done recently, which is called SPRINT, which allows us to, uh, to exercise at a higher intensity, but not as, as frequently. And um, uh, I could have chosen to do that. I, I elected to stay with the, the, the uh, protocol I did last time, which is basically exercising uh, six days a week, uh, about 30 to 40 minutes of aerobic, aerobic activity and uh, about anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half of uh, the weightlifting training, depending on how quickly you want to get through with it and how fast you, you do it. So... Um, yeah, so we, we exercise a lot on board the space station, absolutely. Thank you for that. I uh, I just uh, want to go back to Houston in Studio B with uh, Robert Perlman for another question. Please uh, go ahead and ask your question. Hi. Um, it was mentioned about the psychological challenges of uh, a one-year mission and uh, family support. Um, I'm wondering about the support of crewmates and the French specifically how good of friends you are now between Scott and Mikhail, um, and how how important it is to uh, to get along with your crewmates during a, a challenging flight like this. Yeah, Robert, we are we are very good friends, and we're going to be better friends after a year in space. At least that's what I'm hoping for. But uh, it's. Uh, 
important to keep track of your fellow crew members and um you know whether it's a six month flight or you know even a uh you know an eight day flight like my first flight we rely on each other for for our lives literally and uh so we uh have to take care of one another and look out for one another and it's uh you know it's one of the most important things about being an astronaut and or a cosmonaut and uh being a uh a good crew member and a teammate. Thank you, Scott. I'd like to ask if there's anyone left on the NASA phone bridge for a question. Okay, apparently not. So, <laughs> so uh, it left me to just uh, ask one question. Yes, do you have a question here? Please go ahead. I, I wanted to ask you, uh, since um, the relation between uh, Russia and United, United States are, um, are, are poor right now because of the Ukraine uh, crisis, um, what is your, your reaction, uh, the fact that you are going to work together uh, in the space uh, for one year, does that inspire you something special? And I would just have to refer to my last uh, my last answer, basically. And you know, we rely on each other uh, implicitly for our lives. I mean, there are things that uh, Misha and the cosmonauts um, that I count on for them, um, and you know, in an emergency situation, and they they likewise count on me. So, any. Uh, you know, political issues that exist between our countries is something we don't even discuss. You know, we're great friends, we're colleagues, we're professionals, and uh, you know, that's the way, that's the way it has to be. Yes. I'm absolutely agree with Scott. There is no borders in in space between us, uh, and it's. Uh, great example how we can uh, work together, uh, especially for politics on the ground. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pasiba. Une autre question? Any other question? Yes, please. Excuse me. Est-ce que vous allez amener... Will you be taking... Will you be taking anything special with you, a token? Would you take a token with you to carry it into space to keep you company for a year? Have you thought about that? So any symbolic objects that uh, you will take uh, with you on the space station? Well, the way, the way it was translated to me, a token to keep me company for a year. I'd like to be able to do that, but that's not allowed. But. Uh, Anyway, I, I think I think what you're referring to is uh, any kind of like souvenirs and stuff. And yeah, we we do fly stuff like that. Mostly, f you, know, you can fly a certain amount of items for friends and and organ limited amount of items for friends and and organizations, uh, your colleges, things like that that we that we uh, we tend to do. But I'm I'm not, I'm not flying anything specific. I'm sure you'll be uh, flooded with uh, requests as from now, <laughs> Scott. This is going on TV. Misha, any <laughs> specific objects? Any specific things that you will uh, take with you on board the space station for psychological support? Uh, of course, it's, uh, first of all, uh, it's my private things. It's a uh, photo of my family. It's, uh, um, actually, we can't uh, take a lot of things, private things, to space, only one kilos. Uh, if I understand questions right, uh, and uh, it's um, most likely um, my family, my father, he was a pilot, my mother, uh, unfortunately, uh, they're gone for right now, uh, my family, my grandson, uh, daughter, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Last question from uh, the floor, maybe? No? So, um, leaves us to uh, thank 
you very much, all the partner agencies of the ISS, NASA, Roscosmos, ESA, JAXA, and CSA for uh, joining us today. Thank you very much for joining us, and thank you to uh, UNESCO for hosting uh, this uh, event. Thank you to NASA TV for railing us on the web. Now you'll have the opportunity to uh, have a photo opportunity with the participants and individual uh, interviews. Thank you very much.